I'm starting with a canvas that I've prepped by painting it a deep magenta pink color. I like to start with a bright colored ground, which means that I paint the canvas all one color to begin. I've done this because white is a hard color to cover up when painting, and if you have specks of white showing up under your painting, it looks unfinished. Also, all of the other colors that you paint on top of white look duller than they are, because white is so bright. Having a colored ground adds dimension to the painting. I'm also using brushes of various sizes. Specifically, the square brushes are my favorite. I'm using a cardboard to use as a palette, some paper towel and water, and acrylic paint of various brands. So I'm using a mix of Liquitex Basics, Craft Smart, and the Handy Art Acrylic as well. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a dark blue color and I'm going to use that to create my underpainting or the lines sketching out the shape of my object. So I am using the same reference photo that I used in video number one and I strongly recommend looking at a reference image or several different reference images when you're painting. Even if you're making things up or inventing things and using a really loose abstract style, it's still helpful to look at a reference. If you're feeling like you're having trouble getting enough detail using a brush for your underpainting, feel free to also use a pencil to sketch out instead. Okay, so now I have the general outline of what I'm going to paint. Next, I'm gonna start by painting the darkest shadows. I'm gonna exaggerate my colors in this painting because as you can see, the colors on the reference image are very subdued. So I'm seeing a lot of purple, some light blue, some yellow in the balloon as well as gray. Even though the balloon is actually silver, there are a whole bunch of different local colors on the balloon. Okay, so some tips for painting for beginners is to try to restrict yourself maybe to just the primary colors or just the primary colors plus a few additional colors. So having more colors isn't always better. It can be kind of overwhelming sometimes. Also, if you mix your own colors, it can result in a really rich color palette. So remember from the color wheel video, if you wanna make neutral colors like brown and black, you mix the three primary colors together. So blue plus yellow plus red makes brown. Mixing complementary colors also makes brown. So if you want to avoid a muddy brown painting, you want to avoid mixing those colors together on your canvas. But you do need neutrals in your painting as well. So just something to think about. What I'm doing here is I've mixed a dark purplish brown using blue and red. Remember my rant about purple in the color wheel video. And I'm going to use this to block in my darkest shadows. Okay, so now I'm adding some white and I'm adding some red to make a lighter neutral color for the next lightest areas on my reference image. And those are sort of a grayish mauve color. So adding the red and adding the white to my dark purple brown. And now I'm gonna block in those areas using that color that I just mixed. Okay, so now I'm noticing that there are some magenta colored decorations in the photo that were reflecting on the balloon. So I'm gonna use an actual tube of magenta paint to paint those areas. This is the same, a similar color that I used on the back background ground. Plus, there's also a light, cool, purplish gray that is kind of the mid-range value for this balloon. So I'm going to 
mix magenta blue and white together and paint in that value as well. Okay, so now I see a light gray on my reference image, but I'm gonna add some blue to make the painting a bit more interesting. So I'm using blue and white to make the lighter values for this balloon. So I've painted some of that, that, that color that I mixed on the canvas and I realize it's way too light. So I'm adding a bit more blue to fix it and make it the, the value that I want it to be. Okay, that's better. And now I'm gonna block in that value throughout the painting as well. All right, now to tackle the yellow that I'm seeing on the balloon. So it's like a goldish yellow brown color, like a yellow ochre or a mustard yellow. So how I'm gonna mix this is I'm gonna take my yellow from the tube and I'm gonna mix in tiny bits of blue and red. So I'm kind of neutralizing the yellow or making it a bit more brown. Uh, this is one of the instances of looking at the local color of an object. So it's actually gold on the picture, but it's a brownish yellow in, in real life. So as I'm painting it on, you can kind of notice that it isn't super opaque. So it's sort of see-through in parts. You can see my ground through it. So later I should probably go back and maybe do another coat of that yellow once it dries. Or another way you can make your paints a bit more opaque is to add a little bit of white in. I'm going to be really careful not to mix this yellow in with the purple that I've already painted on the canvas because I want to avoid too much muddiness, too much brown. All right, so now I'm mixing sort of a light purple value and I'm going to block in those light values as well. Now I'm going to mix a highlight color I'm going to use an almost white. So I'm mixing white with just a little bit of that light purple that I had mixed earlier. And as with my last video, the highlights are really going to help to show what this object is as I'm really painting in a pretty loose and abstract style here. So at this point, I'm just reworking some areas a bit. I'm looking for spots where some more contrast is needed or where colors aren't popping out as much as I want them to. I'm mixing some more of that dark purple for my dark shadows again. And I'm just trying to get that full range of dark shadows and highlights and trying not to muddy this painting too much.
So now I'm going to add in the background and as I did in the last video, I'm going to carve out around my foreground image and sort of try to make it more accurate by painting the background around it. And I'm also going to paint over my errors on the underpainting as well where you can see my blue lines um, and I'm going I'm to paint over those. But remember there is a rule in acrylic painting where we normally paint our background first and our foreground second. This rule applies in most cases, like if you were painting a landscape or something, you would definitely want to paint the background before the foreground, but in this case I'm doing it the opposite way. So I'm adding a darker blue-green shadow with a teal background. So now what I'm doing is I'm going in and adding some reflections from the teal wall or background onto the balloon. If this was an actual foil balloon with a teal wall behind it, it would probably have some teal reflecting onto it. So I'm adding those in and then I'm also adding some finishing touches as well. So I also wanted to talk about painting on canvas in general and just mention that canvases are super readily available now at the dollar store and other art stores and they're very inexpensive. When I was an art student but I wasn't a painting major, I felt like if I didn't make and build and stretch my own canvases that I had no business painting on canvas. And I can see how canvas can kind of be intimidating for beginning artists. And I'd just like to say, go ahead and paint on canvas, even if it is slightly intimidating. You can always paint over it if you don't like the result. And also just to note that canvas is usually used when painting with acrylics or oil paints, but you could also do collage on canvas as well. Just be creative, go for it. Everybody has the ability to be creative if they so choose. So as part of my finishing touches, I also want to paint my edges of my canvas. So you want to address your edges in some way. You could paint them all white or all black, or you can like wrap the image around the edge of your canvas, which is what I'm going to do in this case. So I'm going to continue that balloon string all the way uh, around the edges of the canvas. So I'm almost done and the colors of paint that I used to make this painting were red, blue, yellow, magenta, and aqua, as well as white. So here's my painting alongside my grayscale one. So hopefully you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.